Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make my bear hug jungle blanket. It's just absolutely stunning. It's heavy and it works up really, really fast. I made this large throw blanket in three days. So fast. So if you're looking for a project that works up really quickly, looks absolutely stunning. Like you would find this in restoration hardware, a pottery barn. You'd find this in one of those luxurious furniture stores. Absolutely. Everyone that has seen this blanket has gone gaga over it. They just want one. You're gonna love this, okay? The pattern for this blanket is going to be found in both the comment section and the description section below this video. So all you have to do is click on that link, purchase the pattern, and be ready to crochet with me. Now, as usual, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step everything you're gonna need to accomplish this blanket in this tutorial. Though I put a lot of work into that pattern and a lot of work into the instructions on different sizes for this video. So if you are able to support my efforts, that would be incredible. And I appreciate that so much. I really wanted this to be easy peasy for you. So all you had to do was walk into this tutorial and know everything that you're going to need, know exactly how much of everything you're going to need to accomplish the blanket that you desire to make. All right. If at any point in this video, you do like what you see, you're enjoying the content, please push that thumbs up uh, button for me. It's like a big high five and it tells YouTube this is a good video. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel and click the bell, that way you get notified whenever I release a brand new video. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday. Sometimes I release more. I do instructional tutorials on how to's. I give tips and tricks. I do fun giveaways. There's so much we do on this channel and you're not going to want to miss out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, also, if you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram or Facebook where I show you behind the scenes things, give you a upfront what I'm working on and things that I have in the work. There are a lot of interesting things there and you're going to want to know the behind the scenes to just be prepared for what is coming if that makes any sense. So this yarn that I used is the size seven jumbo yarn and it is pricey. This is a project that you're going to be investing in. So I recommend that you use coupons or find sales in order to accomplish this blanket because this is a yarn eater. The size seven jumbo yarn usually works up really fast, but at the same time, you're making this blanket a large adult size blanket in three days. Double crochet stitches, the basics. That's all we're doing. So I'd say that this is a beginner friendly pattern. The only thing that you might run into is just the size of the yarn working and manipulating a big thick yarn. Okay. So other than that, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials you're going to need to make this bear hug jumbo blanket. All right, the materials that you're going to need for the big bear jumbo blanket will include a yarn that is a size seven, size seven, the jumbo size yarn. This is the big boy guys, all right? So I used the loops and threads from Michaels, Ariel Big. This is the color cream. This particular yarn is 70% polyester, 29% wool and 1% spandex. So if you are allergic to any of those materials right there, feel free to substitute this yarn for whatever size seven jumbo yarn that you want. It's not a big deal, all right? I just really liked the way that this felt. It was my favorite, but if you want to substitute, go for it. There's also a lot of colors that you can choose from, which are awesome. All right, I did include a chart in both the pattern, and I will include the chart right here at the side of the screen. In this chart, I include different blanket sizes, those blanket dimensions, chain count for your foundation row, chain count, how many rows you will need to accomplish that blanket dimension. And then on the far right hand side of this chart, you're going to see that I put how approximately how much yarn you're going to need to accomplish that blanket. I will include yards, meters, grams, and ounces in there along with if you're buying this exact skein of yarn, how many skeins of yarn you're going to need approximately to make that size blanket. I did all that math for you to make it super easy peasy. This project works up super fast and you're going to love it. All right, the crochet hook that you are going to want is a 25 millimeter crochet hook. It's a big crochet hook. It's a big boy. Because this yarn is so jumbo, I wanted to accomplish using a crochet hook that will make this yarn 
soft and drapey and cuddly. If you use anything smaller, the crochet stitches are going to be tighter and this blanket is going to be more stiff. We don't want that. That's not cuddly. That's not what we like to uh, cuddle up with on the couch, right? Or drape on our bed. We want something that is loose and like a bear hug. So this is the big 25 millimeter crochet hook. It's very close to actually hand crocheting, but it's more structured, okay? You're also going to need a yarn needle with the huge eye, okay? That huge eye will be able to thread the huge yarn, and that will help us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. A pair of scissors, and optional, guys, is the Aileen's Quick Dry Fabric Fusion. This stuff I swear by when it comes to the huge jumbo yarn because when you weave in the ends, even if you're using the yarn needle, sometimes those ends still poke out. It's not a clean weave in. You can get it as close as you want, you really can, but there's always going to be an end sticking out and it always has a risk of coming undone when you go to wash it, all right? So I use only this one. This is the only one I use, it's the only one I trust, it's the only one I would recommend to you, all right? It's the Quick Dry Fabric Fusion. Aileen's. It dries clear and it dries flexibly. It does not dry hard. So when you use the just small dot to take the end and smooth it over so it camouflages in, you can't, you can't see it and it doesn't come out in the wash and it's completely safe and it dries flexibly so you can't even notice that there's anything there. All right, I will put links to everything you see here in both the description section and the comment section below this video. So if you wanna get your hands on anything you see here, all you have to do is click on that link to purchase it and have it sent directly to you. They are, some of them are affiliated links, not all of them, which just means that if you purchase the item, the company will give me a, a small commission. Thank you for uh, having you purchase the item. And those commissions go straight back into my channel for materials. So thank you so much in advance if you do choose to purchase any materials from the links below. That is awesome. All right. Or you could just go ahead and grab anything you have on hand, go to the store, pick whatever you want. It's all up to you. Go ahead and get all of your materials ready. And once you are prepared, let's get right to actually making our big bear jumbo blanket. The pattern that I use to make the big bear jumbo blanket has three different names. It's referred to as either the griddle stitch, the up and down stitch or the cobble stitch. So if you are familiar with any one of those stitches, they're all the same thing, okay? This pattern is worked in a multiple of two, plus one. So if you want to adjust the size of the blanket or make a washcloth or do whatever you want to do, maybe you just like the pattern a lot and want to make something completely different, it's in a multiple of two plus one. All right. Okay, we begin with a long enough tail for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. I'm going to say this is about, I mean, if you want to get completely specific, Let's start with a tail that's about seven inches long, and that's if you want to be like exactly what I have, or just kind of gauge what you think it would be. And then make your slip knot. Take your crochet hook, attach your crochet hook. And again, we want all of our stitches to be loose here. That's gonna be the big thing. A lot of us want to go tight on our stitches. We really want to err on loose. And once you get the hang of this, it moves super fast, okay? So multiple of two plus one. I'm gonna just do a quick swatch demo. So I'm going to make a total of 11 stitches, okay? That's in a multiple two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's a multiple of two and then plus one. So eleven. Perfect. So that is our chain foundation row. For row one, we're going to single crochet in the second chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our V stitches, remember the loop on our crochet hook does not count. So V stitches, one, two. I like to put my crochet hook with two loops on the top, one loop on the bottom. But if you like one loop on the top, two loops on the bottom, or even to do the piggyback where you put your crochet hook in the middle loop here on the back. There's so many different ways you can do this, guys, working off of the foundation row, but I like it this way. So making a single crochet stitch in the second chain. Okay, 
Okay, give me lots of yarn here. I really, it's almost like an extended stitch where I pull and make sure everything has lots of room, lots of room here. And then in this, in the next chain, we're going to make a double crochet stitch. So yarn over, insert through two and pull through two. Perfect. And that is the repeat pattern all the way across for row one. Single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. You're going to end the very last chain will have a double crochet stitch. All right, so go ahead and continue on and I will meet you at the end of row one to show you what we do next. Perfect. Okay, so we have just finished row one. To move on to row two, we will chain one. We will turn our work. Great. And we will start with a single crochet in the first stitch and then double crochet and then single crochet, double crochet. The pattern is really, you're gonna single crochet on top of a double crochet and you're going to double crochet on top of a single crochet. Okay, so starting with a single crochet stitch and then double crochet. And then next stitch, single crochet. Make sure everything is loose. That's going to be something I'm going to keep saying because I know somebody out there is going to do it too tight. And then next stitch, double crochet. Okay. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but I try to identify the stitch by poking my fingers through it. That way I can see it. If you need to look at the top of your rows to find the V stitches here and then stick your fingers underneath the V stitch, that way you can see where you're inserting your crochet hook, you can do that. And really just continue to make sure that it's flowy, it's drapey, okay? It might take a little bit of practice. Maybe you get through row two, row three, and then you start to get your rhythm. That's okay. And that is all we are doing, guys. That is this pattern. It's so easy. You really get lost in it. The last stitch will always be a double crochet stitch, okay? Last stitch will always be a double crochet stitch. And then for every single row of this blanket, you're repeating row two. For every single row, you're gonna chain one. You're going to turn your work. You start with a single crochet and then double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. And you always end, always end with a double crochet stitch, okay? Keep count every now and then periodically you don't have to necessarily count every single row but you may find it very beneficial very helpful every now and then counting the number of stitches that are in your row you should have one less stitch than the chains you chained in your foundation row okay so for me i started with 11 chains that means every single row i should have a total of 10 stitches Okay, so that should be something for to help you gauge depending on what blanket size you chose. All right, so next thing I want to address is <clears throat> attaching yarn to your project because this is such a big yarn, right? So let me go ahead and work towards the middle here. Okay, so let's just say, there we go. Let's say I've been crocheting along and I'm running out of yarn and I need to attach more yarn to my project to keep going, right? So I'm gonna show you the invisible knot trick, which is something I do often. I do it with all my projects because I trust it, I love it, I use it all the time. Okay, so we're running out of yarn. We need to attach more yarn. Take the yarn that is attached to your project and have it go this direction. Take the brand new skein that you want to attach and have that yarn go in the opposite direction, okay? Butt those up 
against each other. Take two fingers, wrap the two yarns around your two fingers, all right? Take the little tail, go over the two yarns between your fingers, so that way it's sticking out towards your fingernails. Grab that tail, remove your fingers, pull tight and it will form a knot, all right? Now let's do that same thing on this side. So follow the two strands to the other side, two fingers, wrap the two strands around your two fingers, take the little tail, go over the two strands between your fingers, so that way it's sticking out towards your fingernails. Grab it, remove your fingers, pull tight for a knot on that side. So now you have a knot over here and a knot over here. All right, grab this yarn, grab this yarn, pull and those two knots will slide in towards each other and form a very strong knot that isn't going anywhere. Ugh, love it. Grab your scissors. You can actually cut the yarn really close to that knot and that, that knot doesn't go anywhere. It's awesome. Okay, I've used this trick basically every time I make something and I love it, it's so strong. And then when you keep going, working your project, See, there's the knot. You work past it. Now this, this invisible knot trick really only works if you're using the same color yarn. If you're using a different color yarn, I would do a clean end of row break. But if you're using the same color yarn, this is what happens. Pass it by. You can't see it on this side. Let's flip this over. It's right here. I can see it because I'm right here. But if you kind of flip that little strand over, you can't see it. And then when I come back for the next row, it, it disappears completely. So now you don't have anything to come back and address. You're not wasting any yarn by having to stop at the end of a row to reattach. And then you have a bunch of leftover yarn. This yarn's too expensive to do that, guys. It really is. So make sure you use every last bit of that yarn and then you can't see it you can't it's camouflaged so this is called the invisible knot i love it i recommend it if you have your own trick or if you do prefer to do a different method use it go ahead do whatever makes you happy whatever works best for you i just wanted to offer this to you if you would like to use it all right guys that is it so let me go ahead and actually get through and then i want to show you how i would weave in my ends at the end of the project, just so I, I feel like I've covered any questions that may come up. So last stitch, we double crochet. Okay, let's say I've ended my project, like I'm done, okay? So I'm gonna end, I'm gonna cut my yarn long enough tail for me to weave in that end. Okay, I'm going to yarn over that tail, pull that tail through the loop on my crochet hook and pull tight, and that's called a tie off. I've just tie it off my project, my project's done. Grab that huge yarn needle. I twist my yarn to keep it all together, make it easier for me to get it through the eye. The needle. There we go. Come on, there we go. Okay, so I've got my needle here. I'm gonna come back to the project I'm gonna look for where the stitches entered into the row below, and I'm going to actually come through, and I like to go in the middle, see here is the yarn, I go in the middle of that, that strand of yarn. Okay, and then I'll come down to where the stitch entered in the row before, and I'll go through there. All right, and then I'll continue across, but I'll go in the middle, see that? I'll go in the middle of the yarn. The fibers cling to each other when you do that and make a more secure hold. Okay, so I'll go through one way. I have had a hard time with weaving in my ends, so if you're like me and you just don't have good luck with weaving in your ends, then you can do that. And then once I get about 
halfway of my tail that I had to weave in my ends, I will go backwards. So I'll come back upon what I just wove in. And that is the trick that keeps everything secure and snug for me. There we go. And I'll come all the way to the end, just all the way through the side. There we go, release my yarn needle, pull that so it's, it sits nicely and loose and doesn't look tight. All right, and then I will cut flush my yarn. Perfect, now if this is good for you and you're like, no, I'm done, then you have finished. If you would like, you can always use that little bit of fabric glue that I recommended. I would literally put a dot on the end here, smooth it down, and then it dries instantly and this end doesn't move, it doesn't come undone. So that is how I would finish off the project. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I hope you love this blanket. All right, guys, so what did you think of the Bear Hug Jumbo Blanket? I hope you love it. I hope you loved the repeat pattern because for me, I love repeat patterns when it comes to blankets that are simple and you just get lost in it. It becomes very therapeutic and relaxing to just go, right? Well, if you liked this video, you might also really like these videos right here, which are more blanket videos that you might enjoy. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.